Hi there everyone, it's Mark Lawrenson here from Sydney Astrology School and I'm going to talk to you about the 8th house. Now, I get a lot of questions on this particular house. Uh, lots of people saying that they don't quite understand the 8th house, they don't understand what it means. Uh, they get the idea that it is called the house of other people's money, but they don't know how to uh, interpret it in their own lives and what it means to them. And also, if they were sitting down with somebody, if they were sitting down with a client, how to be able to uh, discuss the information from the 8th house with them and make sense of it. Now, I think the 8th house is one of those houses that I feel uh, gets misrepresented just a little bit. Now, it is the house of other people's money. I'm not going to take that away from it. But it's the house of other people's everything. It's basically when you need something from somebody else and somebody else needs something from you, you're going into eighth house territory here. The eighth house is kind of a, a shared, shared, uh, balancing act. It's a, it's a balancing act around the power, um, and the value between uh, two people, particularly in a relationship of sorts. It can be a personal relationship. It could be a business relationship. But it's always going to go down the road of trying to equalize power and value. Now, I'll go into this with uh, an example of what I'm talking about. Um, if you go into a shop and you pay $100 for an item in a shop, and you get a hundred dollars worth of goods back. You feel okay about it. You go, you put it in your bag and you go home happily. But if you pay a hundred dollars for an item in a shop and you get five dollars worth of goods back, you know, you're going to feel something's gone wrong here. You're going to feel a little ripped off and you're probably going to go, excuse me, I've just paid, <laughs> I've just paid a hundred bucks and this is all I got. And so this is what I mean. Here is the, the, the equalization of value that didn't quite work out, that it felt like it tipped too much to one side here. Now, when we in a shop, you know, if this happened to us in a shop, we would put our hands up and say, can we have a look at this and, and fix it? But um, in our personal relationships, this just, this just doesn't happen. Very rarely does it happen. I mean, when you come into contact with somebody, into deep contact with somebody, and you want something from them, and it's usually around love or attention or validation, sometimes it can be money. What happens is that if we put a lot into it, if we give a lot of ourselves, and uh, we feel in a way that we're, we're putting in our fair share, sometimes more, um, but we don't get the same back, we don't necessarily put our hands up in a relationship and go, look, something's going wrong here because I'm giving you all this and you're not giving me anything in return. Most of the time we put up with it. Most of the time we will just go along with it as part of maybe what we deserve or this is how we feel about ourselves. So it's going to be talking to us on the level of our personal value. It's going to be talking to us on the level of our self-worth. And this is what the, the eighth house is all about. This is the, the imbalance we have around the power and the value we have for ourselves and the power and the, and the value of other people. And, uh, we often make the other person, uh, more powerful than we are because there is something about them that we need. And so here we go. This is what happens in all personal relationships in some way, shape or form, because we're going to be sharing ourselves big time. The eighth house is the next step from the seventh. You know, the seventh house is a relationship house, as we know. And the seventh house has got that feeling of coming together in a nice, harmonious way. The seventh house is an air house. So it's got a feeling of, isn't this good we get on? Isn't this good we meet minds? Isn't, isn't this good that we can hold hands? You know, it's got that kind of feeling about it. The eighth house goes deeper. The eighth house is a very intense house. It's a water house. So we're going into deeper, much, much more emotional territory. And so we're sharing ourselves with another person uh, psychologically, spiritually, 
emotionally and sexually and physically and so this is this is you know this is heavy duty territory for most of us uh, to get involved in and that's why the eighth house is arguably the most intense and has that feeling of going into areas where we may feel like we're out of control this is the area where other people can own us and we can actually own other people as well domination control power plays manipulation all those kind of things play out big time in the eighth house which we have to be very very careful of. but as i said before this is big on the level of how much we are willing to take from another person um, via what we need from them and so when you, you've often heard people say you know when you do a favor for somebody or you do a good turn or whatever and they turn around and say i owe you one you know that's an eighth house thing that's an eighth house thing pretty much saying you've done something for me you've tipped the scales up that way and i owe you one meaning i've got to do the same back so we even the scales we even the score now this happens in the other direction as well this happens on the level of you've hurt me you've upset me you know you put me through pain i owe you one almost like i've got to get you back or you know there's areas of revenge that go down this road too and so this is an evening of the score too that plays out in the eighth house and so all these particular areas we all have to be careful of how we play them because there are a lot of things that we need from other people and we are willing to sacrifice our worth and our value um, to have them or to get them and it's usually around us feeling that we don't have it ourselves we don't we don't possess it ourselves we have to we have to have it from outside forces or we have to have it particularly from another person and there is something about ourselves around our personal value that we're going to have to sacrifice in the long run and so the eighth house is a highly transformational house the eighth house is a house of a rebirth of sorts we have to go through uh, a ring of fire. We have to run across those hot coals to get to the other side of the eighth house. And when we get to the other side of the eighth house, we do feel empowered. We do feel that we're, we're more in control of our lives. Uh, but we do have to go through stuff with other people to get there. And when I say stuff with other people, we have to be able to put ourselves in situations where our our personal worth and our personal value is on the line uh, lots of people lots of people marry for money i'm not saying this is good or bad or indifferent but if you're marrying for money and that's what you feel you're going to get out of a partner there's going to be a payoff of sorts there's going to be a feeling of I've, i owe them something you know that feeling and uh, i always think the person with money has got the upper hand in the relationship because they know you need them and so when and when anybody feels that they have the upper hand in a relationship most people are going to use that most people are going to use that in a in a controlling kind of dominating or um or you know even even a a a a, a a way of being able to 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 keep you down or to make you feel small or make you feel insignificant or subjugate you in some kind of way so these are all eighth house things that we have to be careful of the eighth house is that feeling of being able to come into a state of our fearlessness basically uh, the eighth house is also the eighth house uh, the eighth house also carries the the energy around uh uh, death and sex particularly sex sex plays out big time in the eighth house sex is a power play uh, tool a lot of people use sex on the level of control um, I had an, uh, a client once who actually said that if she wasn't getting her needs met in the relationship she would just withhold sex <laughs> it was her way of being powerful it was her way of being able to tip the scales in her direction she would just say there was no sex coming from her 
if she wasn't getting what she wanted. I'm not going to be saying this is a good thing or a bad thing, but at the same time, we're heading into territory, territory when we play those kind of games. Okay. And so I want to just, I just want to uh, finish off with the high side of the eighth house because every single, every single house has got uh, something sacred to offer. Every single house has got something, uh, uh, deeply uh, evolutionary about it on the level of us going through our changes to become the best versions of ourselves possible. Possible, And every house holds a particular terrain, as we know. And so I want to say with the eighth house, the eighth house has to be a feeling of being 100% secure and trusting in ourselves. The eighth house is not it is an area where people don't trust very well. And if you're going to be putting your trust in somebody else, you're again, you're heading into territory there because trusting somebody else is being out, taking your power out of your hands and putting them into somebody else's hands. And so I don't want to say, I don't want to sound too cynical by saying this, but you can never trust anybody regardless. You can ne don't even trust your mother or your, your brother or your sister because everyone Everyone's got their charts. Everyone's got their stories. Everyone needs to do what they have to do. And so the only person really you can trust in the end is yourself. And so this is about you coming into a place where you can share deep and intense. Um, and oh, I, I want to go down the road of saying um, passionate, passionate bonds with people where you do immerse yourself in each other, where you do become uh, so close to each other that it's almost, almost like you become one. It's not quite that. That actually happens more on a Neptunian, Piscean, maybe even a 12th house level. Uh, but the eighth house has this kind of interspersion of, of emotions and interspersions, uh, in, interspersion of, uh, uh, of a kind of like a, a deeply, uh, sexual and and deeply loving vibration that happens between two people um, and when you can go there when you can go there without feeling that you're going to be losing anything most people in the eighth house think something is going to be taken from them without feeling you're going to lose anything because you're already feeling safe and secure you have everything you need the big thing from the eighth house is I don't need anything from you. I don't need anything from you and you don't need anything from me. We just need to come together. We need to come together in a passionate bond and we need to be able to share our lives. As I said before, uh, physically, psychologically, spiritually, sexually, and we need to experience that and we need to go through the uh, the intensity of what that means so we can actually change to become more powerful within ourselves via how we allow ourselves to get in touch with each other. But it's not about, it's not about um, anything to do with putting anything in the other person's hands. This is about feeling safe and secure in your own right, feeling valuable and feeling powerful and feeling that you have everything that you need and then be able to go into a deep sharing experience with somebody else.